When you become that person of influence, you will become to your own self somewhat insignificant. Because if you think higher of yourself than you ought, you enter into a territory where God says, well, you don't need me anymore. And then you go and begin to use human principles to raise yourself up. Now that works. People do it all the time. But it won't be a god influence situation. And then there's another thing. When you release authority, like we talked about previously, people do drop the ball. People do harm your work. They harm what's they, they harm your own influence. Uh, this is a, a you cannot guard against that. Your influence can be hurt by those you have given authority to. But I'm just going to ask that question to Bishop Dave Dolan from New Life in Sullivan, and you'll want to you'll only Google him. Uh, there's so much he has on, 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 on. It's wonderful. The teaching just I never hear him teach that I don't walk away with knowledge that I didn't have before. So what do you do when somebody you trusted drops the ball? Well, you can know for sure, number one, that it's going to happen in your ministry or business at some point. How you, how you adapt to it, how you flow to it, are you willing to restore them? Was it a mistake that they, they knew they could have uh, overcome? Uh, Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. And then Peter, who is going to be the spokesman on the day the church is birthed, denies him and blows it all. Well, how does Jesus deal with that? He ministers to him with the love and the grace of God, looking for Peter's response. And some people can be restored because maybe it was a mistake and it becomes a teaching moment. On the other side of that, you're always looking for people to fill another uh, position or spot. So, so, so deep, you're, 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 you're stacking your, your roster deep like the, Absolutely. the football stars and the yeah. basketball guys. You're going deep on that. Absolutely. The, and that person may simply need to be repositioned because of their ability. Maybe they weren't capable. Maybe there wasn't something that you you saw in the initial process of doing that. We don't have volunteers in our church. Every single person that serves is in leadership training. So whether they're valet, whatever they do, we're watching and our directors are watching, how do we elevate them so that we can bring more people in to create a servant uh, influence with everybody that comes to the church. So it's a, it's a fluid uh, program. So here's a practical step that those of us that are wanting to exude a, a bit of a, a, a influence and step out, we could talk for hours on this, right. but step out. Just to, the practical step is to look around you and see whom, who you can invite to a coffee, right. Right. who you can invite to a meal, see if you can release a little authority to somebody, get some people to help you do uh, do a little networking, and then begin to honor the work that right. they do. You know, I bring that up because you're looking at, at, at Deborah and Dave Dolan are masters at honoring those in leadership training. I didn't first hear that term at his place, but I first saw it really lived out and taken care of. I was invited to speak to their annual volunteer banquet. And we came up, and, and you've had this every year. Right. And I don't know, that night there was 150 or 175 uh, uh, leaders in, in, in training there in that room. Right. And uh, the banquet was served. It was excellent. Gifts were given. It was honor, honor this, honor that, honor the other. And I went home that night into the hotel room thinking, he's showing the number the, la the last person that joined the team, right. he's showing them where they're headed. Right. And he's showing the leaders who's following. Right. So the, the, the reaching down and honoring the door greeter, honoring the life center, the people that unpack the food trucks, the people that, that, that hand out the clothing and do all that you do, all, all those volunteers have to be validated. So a simple act that you can do is, first of all, Sit down, make a list of 10 people that you could invite to a coffee. Doesn't have to spend a lot of money. Get you a pack of coffee and some creamer and find a place. I, I found out that the local Denny's has a, has a side room 
that sits 50 people. I, now, I don't know where I've been. I don't go to many Denny's in my life, but, but I, I kind of liked it. I, I come home, and I was all excited, and I told Pastor Sean, I said, that, right up there, we got a room for 50 people. Find your community center. In our, in our subdivision, we have a community center. Invite 10 people to coffee. You're going to find that the Lord is going to lead right. someone that will pick up your vision. Yep. Even if they fail, as a leader of influence, you communicate to them that failure is not final. You do not want their failure to extrapolate them out of the flow of possibility of what God can do in their life. And when they see that you value them and that you are in love with their ability and what God wants to do in their life, they will push you higher and God will draw them up. And it just becomes a continuity of flow that is just a great blessing. You know, the, the fascinating thing about you becoming a person of influence is that you actually own, open the door for someone to become greater than you. Right. John the Baptist is a, is, a, is a very, very, very good example. He said, there's one coming after me whom I'm not worthy to fasten his shoes. It's just phenomenal. Um, honoring people and watching them honor you and you give that honor to God. The church should be a place where the presence and the power of God, if you focus and you are relentless on honoring people and building leaders and impacting them, even when they fail, you know, the, the, the greatest mistakes I've made in ministry, and uh, I, I think we probably have some people who could, could really vindicate the fact that I made a lot of mistakes, but one of the greatest mistakes that I've owned up to is transitional authority. The ability to have a succession, the ability to get something into someone's hands. Right. Even though I said, because the Lord spoke to me and said, until you get it in the third generation, you haven't really got a strength. I made big mistakes in succession and transition of transitional authority. Yeah. And that is something if I were you, I would begin to work on early. And I, I used to say it, but I didn't do it. Now I'm doing what I say. Look for your replacement. Look who could allow you to be freer in what you want to do as a spiritual entrepreneur to go to different things while you replace yourself. And we like to look within now, Absolutely. I know there's a lot of argument in the business world for, for hiring an outside gun and somebody nobody knows and they come in and they do the hatchet job or they do whatever. But hiring from within has always kind of worked for yeah. us. Preachers and names that I could drop to you that you would recognize have told me that we do our best to hire, promote, teach, train within because we know the good, the bad, the ugly, and we know what we're facing and it takes a minimal amount of effort, and it takes a lot of pressure off of the leaders, not knowing for sure who you have, what's going to happen. And uh, that's what we've begun to do in the last few years, and it's been a great blessing. Well, we could talk for hours and hours about that, and I think we do need to come back. But I am going to be asking our friends and other friends and anybody I can get in this chair to take 10 with me and talk about this. Because I know you can be a person of great influence I believe in seed ministry. I believe that the Lord has dropped a seed into your heart that is supposed to grow into a mighty oak tree that many will take shade under. And it's our job to coach you and bring you to that place of ultimate authority where you are able to release other seedlings to make forth the power of the idea that you have in your heart. Come on, take 10, become a person of great influence. God bless you. I'll see you next time.